All right, we are back for session at number three. And if everything is working, you guys should, yay, it looks like it's working. But I'm bump. Awesome, awesome. We are into DJ and TV's mini sessions. This is our first one here in 2017. Thank you for watching. Uh, if you have any questions or comments during during some of the sessions, I'm going to be in the chat room, and some of them I'll be talking. Like in the past, the last one we just finished up with Jimmy talking uh, marketing materials. I couldn't follow the chat room, so I apologize for that. But there's going to be some times where it's going to be a pre-recorded uh, session, so I can do that. Schedule is out at djntv.com/mini-sessions. You can see the whole schedule for today. You can catch some of the folks you want to hear, and you can always come back later and watch them. Now, we had a, uh, a an issue with the Bill Herman one, and it was recorded. Uh, he did record it while he was doing that for us. Yay, I was wanting, hoping he would. So that one is going to go up into the DJ and TV uh, insider area. So if you join the insider area, you're going to be able to get the full video, and we're going to take all of these and separate them and put them into those insider areas because we want to make sure that uh, the insider folks can access those and uh, be able to learn at their own speed and at their own timing. So... Good, good stuff. Um, again, pop out there. You can check that out. On the right side, there is a spot where we're doing some donations. What we do with the Distracting News, part of it is we like to give back to the DJ industry that has gotten us where we are. There is a chance to donate because we have a fund that we put together that helps DJs in need. Specifically, um, last year, I think we helped, we helped, I think, seven different DJs who are having cancer treatments at some some point in time in their, their uh, they were having treatments or different things, and they needed some emergency money because it was just what they needed at that time. So we have this fund we put together, and we like to take care of those who, who are, are just having a really hard time. You know, everyone has health issues, I realize that. But sometimes you get behind the eight ball and it's unbeknownst to you that something's coming. This is our way to be able to help a few more DJs. So uh, please uh, take a look at that. If it's something you'd like to help donate to, all the money that's donated to that will go help uh, DJs uh, throughout the course of the year. This is this is an area in which we can, again, give back to those that are around us. So uh, Matt Peterson is up next, uh, and he's going to be doing our next session. This is a pre-recorded session, so I will be into the chat room. So if you guys have any any questions or thoughts, we'll see you there. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is DJ Matt Peterson from Peterson Productions Disc Jockeys. We have been in the DJing North and Western Massachusetts since 1989. I'm here today to share an example of a, of a midweek event that we have that we've been doing on an annual basis since early 1990. The topic I'm going to talk about today is the possibility of midweek car shows or cruise nights as we commonly refer to them in New England Mass. Now, folks, before I get into the topic, I have a couple questions to go ahead and ask you first. Now, folks, think for a moment back to your teen years when you were just starting to drive. If I were to ask you if you could name your very first vehicle that you ever purchased, I'm pretty sure all of you can go ahead and relate to that question. For me, my very first vehicle was a Ford Mustang. I was psyched. I was ready to get going, ready to get cruising, and I was living life to its fullest. Now, folks, on that same question, think for a moment. Can you remember the very first song that was playing when you were driving your vehicle? Again, I'm pretty sure you all can relate to the fact that music relates to every bit of our life. And I'm sure that you can relate to the fact that music makes the world go round, and music is what we're talking about today. I'm talking about music for car shows, for cruise night events that you might have in your local area. Now, folks, for me, I live right here in Western Mass, and we have a plethora of venues and places and establishments where we can host a cruise night. For me, I found out there are several different things when you look at your location that make it work for you or don't make it work for you. One, being here in Mass, we have a beautiful New England summer. Luckily enough for us, we also have spring, summer, and early fall that works out for us. So when you look at developing your own car show or cruise night, you want to look at several different things. You want to look at your location. Is it readily accessible? Is it easy for people to drive to? Is it easy to people to get there and rest and relax and enjoy their time during your event? Now, folks, for me, that place actually works out in a great outdoor pavilion where we have access to a lush, green, grassy yard. Now, this may not be possible for you, but folks, you might want to look at a place that either has concrete or is well-paved. You want to have a place that's well-lit for the summer months or even for the fall or even for the fall evenings. Okay, Look at a place that is readily accessible. The place I'm talking about is right on a major highway, it's major, on a major route. Very easy for people to find. 
very easy for people to get there or drive to. It's also located centrally so that people can come from many miles away to our local area for the cruise nights. I have found, it's been my experience, that people will drive if they like the place where you're hosting your cruise night or your event. Now this is very important folks because if you don't have a place that people like, people aren't going to go there. I don't care what type of music you're playing. I don't care how great of a DJ you are or entertaining you are. If people do not like your venue, they're not going to like you. They're not going to like the establishment. They're not going to want to come to your weekly car show. Now, the folks thing I'm talking about here is with cruise nights or car shows, you want to be consistent and you want to be persistent. People have to know that you're going to be having your weekly cruise night or event on that date at that time when you say you're going to be there, regardless of weather. Now, this is very important. Being from New England... Weather does play a very important factor in your car shows or your cruise nights, okay? People don't want to take their vehicles out in the rain. If it's pouring rain or cold, or if you have a dusty, dirty driveway, people are not going to want to drive their precious vehicles. And I'm talking about collector vehicles here, folks. I've seen cars from 1908 and 1909 come to our weekly car shows. You want to make sure that the road is nice and paved, clean, easy, isn't full of rocks, and doesn't have any deterrence for people driving their vehicle to your actual location. Now, in terms of location, you want to go ahead and take a look at several factors as well. It's been my experience that if you have a place that has an outdoor pavilion or an open pavilion, a green grassy area, a place for the cruisers to actually go and hang out and enjoy their evening with you. Now, this is very important. You want to have some shade. Okay, You don't want people parking their lovely vehicles or precious vehicles underneath a maple tree or a shade tree. Okay, Why? You don't want pitch, tar, and those things to deter the vehicles from parking in the yard. You have to have a shady area. You have to have a nice, cool area that people can sit down in and enjoy food and beverage. Now, this is another big plus for cruise nights, folks. You want to make sure that you've got plenty of nice, cold beverages, including water and soda. It's very important in New England here. You want to have plenty of beverages, water, soda, and possibly some alcoholic beverages. Now, folks, the thing about this is, you're not going to a cruise night or DJ and entertaining a cruise night and thinking that you're going to be making a ton of money. While cruise nights might not be the most lucrative event, I'm actually here to go ahead and tell you that they can be very lucrative and they can be financially rewarding for you if you follow several rules. Those rules are this. One, as a DJ and entertainer, you are not the main focus of this car show. People like coming out to cruise nights because they like to socialize amongst themselves and with other cruisers. If you can provide a nice, lovely environment that brings people back to the memory, go back to those memories, folks. Now go back once again to your very first car and that song that was playing on the radio. People want to relive those joyous moments from their lives. As you, as a professional DJ and entertainer or the entertainment company, want to provide that same atmosphere. You want to bring people back to those very, very happy, jolly memories from years past. So for being a DJ or an entertainer, it's really simple and really easy for you to go ahead and play music that is across the board. Now, folks, when, when I first mentioned cruise nights, you might have started thinking, maybe I need music from the 50s, 60s. That's pretty much it. Well, as a professional entertainer, I'm sure that you've got the equipment that is necessary and is required for you to go out and perform for a car, local car show or cruise night. Now, with that being said, you've got the equipment already. Chances are you've already got the music as well. But one of the quick tips that I'll go ahead and suggest to everyone out there is be aware of your surroundings. Be aware of the demographics and of the people that you're inviting to your cruise nights. Now, folks, one of, my first one of my first experiences with cruise nights was the film American Graffiti. This is an American classic. It told the history and story of cruising in your downtown, in your hometown, and spending the whole entire summer enjoying being in your vehicle and driving around cruising. Now, folks, I'm sure, I'm sure you're all familiar with the, the band The Beach Boys. They're a classic, yes. Definitely have some Beach Boys. Have some Elvis Presley, have some classic music. But the thing I'm here to go ahead and remind you about today is you want to start looking at these people that are driving these classic vehicles from the 50s, 60s, and 70s, whereas they might be anywhere between 60 and 70 years old right now. Don't forget about the people that were born in the 70s and the 80s as well. You know, if you were born in 1970, you are now 56 years old. You're getting into your prime, you're getting up there, you're in your middle age, but you enjoy listening to music from the 70s and 80s as well. It's been my experience here in New England that Bob Seger is a must. You must have Bob Seger. You've got to have the classic songs like Mustang Sally. But folks, do yourself a favor. When you're performing at a cruise night, go ahead and take a look at your clientele. They will suggest the songs they want to hear. You've got the music already. You've got it down. 
but it's very important for you to go ahead and take a look at the clientele and who's coming to your shows week after week after week. Now, when I was talking about my local car shows, I've had the pleasure of doing them for 10 years straight now. 10 years in a row, this one place invites me back. And folks, it's been great because the simple thing is, you've already got the music, you know the crowd, you know who's coming, and you're all set, good to go. Take it from me, folks. These people that go out to car shows and cruise nights, they will go every night of the week if you let them. So a car show or cruise night is fantastic because one of the things you can do is you can turn it into weekend work as well. You can work on a Friday and Saturday or even a Sunday. Folks, do yourself a favor. Go ahead and take a look at your local listings. Take a look at the venues and look at places that, one, have adequate food, beverages, soda supplies, and food. It's very important. You're inviting these people to come to your local venue or your local house or your yard, and you're inviting them to come and join you for several hours through the week. I've had luck on a Monday night. Other people have had luck on a Friday night. If you're going to do a car show or a local car show or cruise night, make sure that you are consistent and persistent and you are out there. For the disc jockey or entertainer, it's really simple and really easy, folks. Once you're there and you're set up and you get a following, you got to develop a following and keep those people happy and they will keep coming back week after week after week. This is very, 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 I mean, very important. You want to take a look at the clientele and see who they're coming from. I've actually had much luck with going ahead and having a photographer come along. I have an assistant DJ who comes along and she actually does a great job of photography with photography filming the event. We take pictures of the local winners. We put them online and we also go ahead and put them up on the Facebook page. Now here's another quick tip for you folks. Go ahead and ask if you can take over the Facebook event page or the website for the local car show. If you can do that, you can go ahead and control people and you can go ahead and promote your local event in the local papers and things like that. <clears throat> Excuse me. So you can go ahead and do that. It's been my experience that you can also go ahead and charge other companies and get sponsors involved as well with your local car shows that will help cut the cost of providing the entertainment. Okay. You can also go ahead and get local sponsors. Look at car shows. Look at car dealerships. Look at automobile dealerships. Look at your local gas station. These places might want to sponsor your event. And you can go ahead and do a 50-50 raffle or you can do a cash raffle, raffle or you can even do prizes. Just another way you can go ahead and make some money with a local car show. That's one of the things. The other suggestion I'm going to look for you is, folks, think about the automobile industry out there. Now, whether you prefer foreign or domestic or, or American-made cars, there are plenty of automobile dealerships out there. One of the other great sources you can do to make revenue is go ahead and rent out your lights, rent out your uplighting for a, for a local car show. Go ahead and talk to your automobile dealer out there. When they have a new line or a new, a new line of a vehicle coming out, go ahead and talk to them. You can DJ the event. You can DJ a grand opening. You can have a grand opening of an automobile dealership. You can also go ahead and rent out your lights. Now, my good friend Raymar actually posted last year that he actually went to a baseball field and they rented the uplighting for a baseball field to showcase a car that was being put on display in front of the baseball field. How awesome is that? There's many different ways you can go ahead and make money with a car show or a local cruise night. Again, just a couple of friendly reminders for you to please go ahead, look at your location. Very important to have a great location that offers shading, a grassy area. Make sure that it has a grassy area for people to sit in. Make sure it has chairs for people to sit in. And you want to have plenty of open air for people to come enjoy it. Now, I've realized one of the things with my car shows that I can talk about annually is we actually are able to do it for seven months out of the year. Holy cow, seven months out of the year. Can you imagine that? How would you like to be set up at a place weekly, every week for seven months out of the year? That is 28 weeks out of the year of 52 weeks. That's how you're going to make your money, folks. Get into a place, be persistent, be consistent, always make sure you're there, always make sure that you are there when you say you're going to be there, weather permitting, of course, and always be on the lookout for new upcoming car shows. Uh, folks. Please do yourself a favor, consider car shows. If you have any questions for me, go ahead and reach me, DJ Matt Peterson, at Peterson Productions Disc Jockeys. You can find us online at petersonprodj.com. You can find us on Facebook, Peterson Productions Disc Jockeys. And on behalf of the name, the National Association of Mobile Entertainers, please enjoy the rest of your mini sessions. Take care, folks. Have a great afternoon, and keep on cruising.
So that was Matt Peterson. I'm going to shut that off again. You know, I, I'm, I listen to the thing, so I'm monitoring what's going on with the live sessions, and then I forget to shut them off, or I should say with the recorded one. Good stuff, Matt. I, that, was, that was kind of cool listening to that a little bit. Uh, there's some neat ideas, man. If we could get booked 28, out of, uh, 28 weekends out of the year in one location, how awesome would that be? Especially a car show. My gosh, I'd be home every... I'd get into car shows, except I'd have to play polkas like Reggie does. And, you know, I actually know that we wouldn't do that. And I said, oh, maybe we might. But, hey, I don't know. Yeah, Bill Herman broke the Internet. And he's he, now everyone should point to say boo because he broke the Internet. We've got our next session up here. We've got to jump right to that because we are just, just kind of tight on time, and I don't want to go too, to get too far behind. Uh, Jared Wade's up next, and he's got some social media things he's going to be talking about. And again, I'll be in the chat room here. Actually, I think I'm going to run and try to grab a sandwich during this one. So Jared's up next here on the DJ and TV mini sessions. Hey there, everybody in the interwebs and internets and everything in between. My name is Jared Wade, and I get to talk to you tonight during the Disc Jockey News mini sessions about technology and social media. Now, I'm going to give you a fair warning right now that everything that I'm going to talk about could possibly change in the next two, three, four weeks, month, two months, four months, whatever. That's just the way technology and social media work. You learn something, you think you figured it out completely, and then it totally changes. And that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. It's just what I'm getting ready to tell you is stuff that works for me, um, what I see in social media and in technology, and how you can hopefully implement it and apply it to your business, uh, to yourself. If you're a single op, you're going to be able to use a lot of this information. If you're a multi-op, you should be able to use a lot of this information. Multi-ops, at the very end, I'm going to be talking a little bit about some technology aspects that, one, specifically, I think you guys are going to really, really love. So I don't want you to go anywhere just yet. So uh, saying all of that, I I got to say I am kind of excited about being a part of this because I get to present uh, about technology and social media, but there are so many fabulous other presenters that are going to be speaking. They've either spoken before me or they're speaking after me, but people like uh, Sean McKee or Dave Turner, David Hoyt, uh, Mike Walter, Randy Bartlett. Um, oh, geez, there's, there's a lot. There's a, there's a plethora. Uh, Jimmy De Palma on graphics. The dude's amazing with graphics. So if you haven't checked his little seminar, his little section out, take a look at it. He does pretty much all of my graphic work now. So I'm going to be emphasizing a lot on mobile. Mobile is key for social media. If you're not one, if you don't have a smartphone, you need to get a smartphone. That's just, I'm sorry. If you're going to do business now, you have to have a smartphone. Uh, and two, if you've got a smartphone and you're not using all of the features because you don't want to feel like you're being overwhelmed or just a lot of, you don't want to be bugged all the time. Sorry. With small business stuff, you have to be bugged all the time. You ha there's, you just have to. There, there is no workaround to it. So giving you fair warning on that right now. Tonight, though, I'm going to be focusing this conversation on the big four, as I call them, the big four, which are Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, and Facebook Messenger. Yes, Facebook Messenger might have thrown a few of you guys for the loop, but I'll, I'll explain why here in a little bit. So first, we're going to start with the king. We're going to start with the big guy, Facebook. Facebook is, of course, everybody knows Facebook. Everybody's on Facebook. If you're not on Facebook, you're you're blowing my mind right now. But he is the king. The king is Facebook. Now, you do have personal pages and you have business pages. If you've got, and I, forgive me, but I'm going to be directing a lot of this towards small businesses. If you don't have a business page for your business, whether you are single op or a multi-op, you need to get one. You have to have one. Uh, as much as I love building, I'm a single op, as much as I love building a, a rapport and a connection with my clients and with uh, with my brides, grooms, and anybody in between, you have to have that business element because that's not where those relationships start. If you have just a personal Facebook page, that's fine and that's nice, but you kind of have to have that separation between, you know, what's going on behind the scenes within your business and what's going on in your real life. 
Also, Facebook Live, if you're not using Facebook Live specifically on your business page, you need to be doing so. Um, they just released some, some stats on it, and businesses that use Facebook Live get a 300% ranking increase. Did you catch that? So if you're not using Facebook Live specifically for your business, you need to be. And <laughs> there is no, there is no, I don't wanna, a 300% ranking increase because they're pushing it right now really, really hard. A 300% ranking increase really gets people seeing what is going on. Now, the key thing though is making sure that whatever you do Facebook Live wise is worth it. You wanna make sure that people, when they tune in and they're watching, it's worth their time to watch it. So make it interactive, make it engaging. It's the only way it's gonna really work out. The second one, I call this the Insta Queen. It's Instagram. Instagram is by far the 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 fastest growing social media outlet out there right now. Um, the the whole point of Instagram: take a photo or video, post it up there, walk away. This is more towards that White Castle -y type of an approach. Um, it might show back up later, but once it's on there, it's it was it was the precursor to Snapchat. So it's got a little bit more of a longevity to it. Uh, Instagram Live is here and it is available, but for how long? They need to make some changes, in my opinion. Um, there's no option to save the video, so that's a huge hindrance. A lot of people don't want to just throw something really big up there and then with no ability to go back and watch it again. I think Snapchat does have that ability, but Instagram does not. Um, this is the biggest competition for Snapchat right now. Uh, a big thing that jumped out at me was I'm getting ready to do a prom and high schoolers, I was talking to the prom committee Every single one of them said Instagram was their go-to choice. That was the one that their entire school uses, and it makes sense. Our third one, Pinterest, I, I call it the princess. The princess Pinterest, that's right. Um, Pinterest is long-term game. This is like the chess of social media. You're gonna post your photo and then wait, and sometimes you have to wait a long time in order for it to really start to rejuvenate, but throw your web links on there, throw your URL, throw some hashtags on there. Um, I use Pinterest not very well. That's probably the, the one social media outlet that I use the least uh, because it takes some work to get it going. I know other DJs that use it and some love it, some don't. It's 85% of all, all Pinterest users are women. So if you wanna reach out and you wanna show them your up lighting, your pin spotting, your, your active lighting, anything like that, or big dance crowd shots, Use that ability to create boards and create groups and then share the freaking crap out of it because that's the only way it's going to get across to all of the different places that you want it to reach. Hook up venues, give them links, um, throw it on your Facebook, interconnect all of your social media in order to really connect it together. Um, the the fourth one, the joker as I call it, is Facebook Messenger. Granted, it's not its own social media outlet, but <clears throat> we definitely need to chat about this because it's gaining momentum like crazy. I see a lot of guys, and I see a lot, well, guys and girls that are not on Facebook Messenger. They don't have it installed on their phone. Do it. Install it. I know you don't want to, but so many prospective clients find you, and if they can connect with you instantly through Facebook Messenger, they're gonna do it. I've booked two events in the last three weeks just because I responded to Facebook messages. I struck up a real quick conversation. I was able to get them information they wanted quickly, and then by the end of my conversation, which sometimes would take about you know, three or four hours back and forth. I either had them in my office and we were chatting or I already had them booked. One booked instantly, the other one came in here and then they booked after they met with me. You, you, you don't understand how useful Facebook Messenger is if you're not already using it. Also, the video chat feature, pretty much everybody that has Facebook is already using Facebook Messenger to a certain degree. If they reach out to you through Messenger, they've already got a way to have a video conference chat with you right then and there. And the beautiful thing is Facebook keeps evolving it. So what they're doing is they're expanding it and they're making it bigger and better and, and just wonderful. Um, the group chat feature is, is really working well for them. So 
Again, mobile. Mobile is key here. Uh, the three that I think a lot of guys probably thought I was going to talk about that I didn't uh, are Snapchat. Uh, I think that it's losing its connection with youth, with the youth. I think more and more people, uh, younger, the younger generation, are going up to Instagram. They still like Instagram more because they like that ability to pull up pictures from a while ago. Twitter, I think Twitter is on its way out. I, I think it's got a solid year, maybe two left. There's not a lot of momentum behind it. Um, and it's just become a, a large brand complaint center. I, I mean, I'm going to be very blunt and very honest with you. There's not a lot of uh, of traffic other than people that want to complain and, and, and people that, um, in, in my opinion at least, people that want to complain and and that's really it that's really what twitter has become uh, and the third one is linkedin linkedin could be really really good they're trying really hard to be like facebook the visually and applicationally uh, but Salespeople have just engulfed it. So if you're looking for a job, cool, you can use it. If you're trying to network with people, not so much because I know my LinkedIn inbox gets full of salespeople every single day and it's it drives me absolutely bonkers. So Snapchat, Twitter, and LinkedIn, I think that they're... I think they're the bottom of those seven that we've talked about. So um, a few websites and apps that I think you guys should check out. Um, there's a service called If This Then That, www.iftt.com. Um, it's, it, it's a service that kind of links all of your social media outlets together through recipes. It's a fabulous service. I love it. I use it all the time. Uh, another service called Later, www.later.com. It's an Instagram scheduling website. So you would be able to use your uh, use your Instagram, but program it and schedule it. Like you can scroll, like you can schedule on Facebook. Now you can schedule on Instagram as well. Uh, and then finally, multi ops and single ops. There's a wonderful app. And it's web-based, uh, but there's a great Android and great, uh, I think, Windows and iOS versions as well called Slack. Slack is probably one of the greatest uh, apps that I've come across for collaborative hive mind development uh, without the drama. Um, if you've ever wanted to be a part of like a solid group of other DJs and you know exactly what you want to talk about and you don't want a lot of the BS, uh, Facebook groups is great, but there's a lot of there's a lot of really dumb stuff that happens in Facebook groups that it doesn't make any sense why it's out there. A Slack group and and you 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 bond with those guys that are in that group or those girls that are in that group with you, it's going to make your lives so much better in so many different ways. So here you go. Uh, if you want to talk to me directly, reach out to me. You can connect to me through... Connect to me through, connect with me through, there we go, uh, jaredwadeentertainment.com. Uh, I'm going to be at Arms DJ uh, Conference in 2017, and I'm also going to be attending the Wedding NBA in 2017. Arms is in Tennessee. Wedding NBA is in Vegas. Um, if you want to reach out to me through Facebook or Instagram, please do so. The only thing that I ask is send me a message letting me know that you're connecting to me because of this video. Um, I don't accept everybody uh, at my on my personal accounts, but you can definitely find me on on my business accounts, just search Jared Wade Entertainment and uh, I'll pop right up. So uh, hopefully your 2017 is going to be amazing. If you're watching this in 2018, probably forget everything that I just said because social media and technology has been turned upside down on its head once again. So thank you so much. I will see you guys later. Thanks. All right, we are back. Of course, this is live right now. You guys have just watched. I'm going to shut that off again. Just watching Jared talk about social media. Gosh, there's some some channels or, or social media platforms, and I'm kind of somewhat up on that. And there were things in there. I was like, what? I don't. I've never seen that, heard that, thought about that. Uh, things you learn, even when you're doing things on on my side of the of the equation here today. We've got two more in this hour. Every hour we're switching, going to a different player. So if you're following us, you can go to djntv.com slash mini sessions. And once you're there, you'll be able to go and see all of the different YouTube players. The ones from earlier are already done and they're set. You can go back and check those shows out and the ones that are coming. Well, that's where you'll find the links. Just kind of kind of a cool way that all works out. And hopefully Bill Herman won't break the internet anymore. We, we you know want to try to keep him from getting crazy and doing that. He does get crazy once in a while. 
Uh, our sponsors tonight, you've seen some of them in the lower lower thirds. We've got a lot of great sponsors here with the Disc Jockey News and Disc Jockey News TV. Please go show them some love because without your supporting them, they can't support us. And if they can't support us, we can't do things like this. And that's a, an important thing. Um, you know, you've got uh, uh, supporting our, our DJ and TV shows. You've got ADJ, DJ Event Planner, and all Effects Pro is going to be uh, sub- sponsoring us in um, – starting in February, and of course, Electro Voice. Electro Voice with their EKX speakers and their new ETX speakers, which if you're in the market for speakers, go to the chat room and ask me about that because there's a great promotion going on right now. By the time some of you watch this in February, it's over. It's a January thing. There's some just incredible pricing that's going on right now, and that's something you want to check out. So uh, we're going to be back in just a minute. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, Shaney is up next. Yes, Shaney will be up here in just a moment. Hey guys, what's up? It's DJ Shaney from Chicago. For those that don't know me, um, I do mobile gigs and I also do club gigs and stuff like that. And I'm here to talk to you about, is it the gear that makes us better? Because guess what? In my opinion, it doesn't matter what you're spinning on as long as you quote unquote have the talent and you put in the practice and you know what you're doing. I think it doesn't matter what type of gear you're spinning on. I think you're going to do an incredible job no matter what, but you have to put in the work, you have to put in the practice, you have to put in the talent. And what do I mean by that? I mean, just like anything else, we all know those athletes that are born with everything like Michael Jordan. But if you think about his history, there's that famous quote that's always been going on with Michael Jordan talking about he even got cut from his high school basketball team. And what did he do? He practiced. He put in the practice, he put into the work, and yes, as soon as he got to the pros, as soon as he got to North Carolina before that, he made it look easy. He made it look easy. It didn't matter. He played with the flu. He he did whatever he had to do to make it look easy, and that's what I'm saying to you guys, that it doesn't matter what you're spinning on. You can get, you know, the most expensive equipment. You could say to somebody, well, I want the best. I want to make sure I'm spinning on something that's you know, this amount of money, I want to make sure that I have that. And that's great if you're that type of person. I mean, I like to get the best equipment as well. But I also do club gigs and I do gigs out of town and I do this. And even though things are in my rider, it doesn't mean it always happens that way for me. So I try to do whatever I can, whether it's on a little tiny small controller that I'm not used to, or if I'm in a club and I'm in a mixer in CDJs that have had alcohol spent, you know, poured all over it and crossfaders that have like a gummy bear as part of the crossfader and that's what I'm using. So when things like that happen, you got to roll with it and you got to practice and you got to get yourself up to that level. And how do you do that? Practice, 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 you know, and it's the same thing with emceeing and with DJing. So it comes second nature to you guys. You know, when it comes to DJing, it's, it's got to come that second nature, like, like you're breathing. I don't want to see anybody out there that's freaking out because I don't know what I'm going to play next. And this, this group is on the dance floor and I got to do this. I got to do that. You got to have kind of game plans going on in your head. You know, I don't want everybody in our industry to be what I call them, the button pushers. And I call them the knob turners as those on DJ and TV. No, I, you know, the, the knob turners. And those are the people that always play with the filters and they do this because they don't have the t- talent. And if you had a piece of equipment that didn't have any of that stuff, can you just mix? And it doesn't even have to be mixing. I know there's a lot of DJs out there that don't mix and that's fine, but can you make a nice flow go 
from one song to the other. So your dance floor is happy and they're not walking off because there's dead air and this and that. And that's just practice. And I know people say, well, I don't have time and I'm always doing gigs and I got to do the prep work. But guess what? Everything you're talking about, you're doing the prep work. That's the prep work and the paperwork and everything that you're doing for your wedding and for your gigs. That's the same thing you have to do for your DJing. You know, the people who you look up to in the industry, whether it be people in the mobile industry or, you know, hardcore million dollar people in the, in the club industry, they're not just sitting at home eating bonbons before their next Vegas gig or before their $10,000 wedding. Trust me, they're practicing. They're putting mixes out on their podcasts or their SoundCloud. And they're practicing like, if I went from this transition to that transition, how would I do it? And, you know, as I said, you know, I know Nam just happened and all the new gear just came out. And I was joking around that I would even get that boom box <laughs> to just play with because I think it's cool. Cool. And you know what? I, like I said, if somebody wanted to hand me that, I would try to do a whole set on it. You know, maybe not at one of my expensive mobile gigs, but just to have fun with it. And those, that's the kind of things you guys need to do. We need to have fun with our job. And when we have fun with it and we practice and we put in our passion into what I do, what you do, it's going to all come together. And if you're in this industry and you can tell me that you're not having fun and you're not passionate about it, you got to get out. You got to get out because we don't work the nine to five job. We're not in a cubicle. Those people always complain and they always complain. And the minute their work is over, they leave. They don't want to worry about it. People like us, we're on our phones 24 seven. We're checking emails. We're doing that. That's the same thing you need to do with your DJing. You need to update your music. You need to make sure you have the hottest stuff that's out there. You need to know what, you know, the kids are looking at YouTube. You need to know what the um, 20 year olds are listening to the 30 year olds, you know, is this now is disco dead with this group? Or are they into Motown and this and that? And you need to know how to mix it. And to do that, again, I'm, I'm going to keep stating because I believe it, it doesn't have to be on the most expensive, the best gear that's out there, get something that is good for you. The smaller units that don't have all the bells and whistles, if you're beginning DJ, it's okay to get something like that. Because guess what, if nobody saw you mixing on it and they just heard the mix they wouldn't know what you're mixing on if i did something on like a fisher price mix unit which i i wish there was something out there because i would totally rock it and i put a mix together and i put it on a soundcloud i did the same exact mix and i put it on the new roland or the new tour pioneer system, uh, you know, and I did the same mix, it would be like the Pepsi Coke challenge. I would say to you, which do you think is on the most expensive unit? And which do you think is on the Fisher Price unit? And if you could tell the difference, then I need you to come with me when we go to Vegas. But if you don't know the difference, it's because I put the work into it and I practice and I work on my craft and I'm not hitting the filters. And yes, the sync button, that's a whole nother talk that, you know, maybe we'll talk about in a, in a, in a in a different rant. But right now I'm saying to you guys, worry about working on yourselves, not I got to have this, I got to have that, I got to have this. Put your money to what you think you need. If you need a better computer, get that and then get something that you're mixing on that maybe is not as expensive, but works for you. So I want to make sure that you guys work on your craft because that's how you're going to get better is working on your craft practicing, knowing your music, knowing your cue points. And guess what? You don't need to spin on the best units out there with that kind of stuff. So just make sure you work on everything that you're passionate about. And I bet you, you're going to progress when, you know, the end of 2017 comes to where you were at the beginning of 2017 to the end of 2017. So I hope you guys work on your passion. If I ever see you in person, please let me know how you're doing, what you're mixing. Let me know what you're spinning on. Send me an email, send me a Facebook, Snapchat, Instagram, whatever you guys want to do. Cause I want to hear from you guys to know that hopefully I helped you out a little bit knowing that you don't have to go for the best. We don't have to always get the, you know, the Maybach Mercedes and stuff like that. It's okay to get the Priuses. It's okay. If you like the little smart car, me, I'm not a smart car person, but that's okay. <laughs> Some other, somebody else, if they like those little smart cars, I can't put anything in my purse probably wouldn't even fit in that smart car, but it's okay. So work on your craft, work on what works for you. And I hope you guys are progressing and put your passion into what you're doing. I'm MC DJ Shaney from Chicago, and I'll see you guys the next time around.
All right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Stop that. There's the echo because I had the cue on. Goodness gracious. You'd think I'd know not to do that by now, Cubby. <sighs> okay. <laughs> hey, we're back. We're just wrapping up our, I don't know, third hour? Third hour. Must be third hour. And right now, my guest is I've got Andy Cubby Powell. And Cubby, thanks for joining me today. John, what a day, man. I've been watching all these videos and, and uh, just picking up so much. This is incredible. Can't wait for the remainder of the day. And I'm uh, just proud that I can open up for Andy Bartlett. Yeah, exactly. You're one of the opening acts for Andy today, which is always <laughs> an, awesome, <laughs> an awesome thing. <laughs> oh. So we're going we're gonna to get uh, Cubby going a little early because we're going to talk for – got a few things we want to hit, and then we'll do our changeover at about 5-2 for those of you who are keeping track. Again, sponsors, show them some love. The There's a lot of great sponsors. Yeah, they echo, the echo, 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 echo. Yeah, thanks, thanks, Bill. Uh, but please show the sponsors some love. Check out the schedules. You've, you've heard me talk about it so far today. We're going to get into it. Cubby, social media. Now, we were talking a little bit. We've talked about this and some of our other things, but I wanted to dig in a little bit. We'll start off with how you've been using social media because you do a lot of trivia events during a week. So let's. how do you tie those all together? Oh, so what I do, John, is it's really helped me grow my social media presence and my reach further is I do host trivia at some different locations all, uh, throughout, throughout the area. And uh, so every week we post the word of the day or a phrase that pays. And what we do is it's kind of fun. It's, it's, it's unique. It's uh, time, time sensitive. And uh, as we sign up all these teams, we tell all these teams to go out like our Facebook page at Select Entertainment uh, out of Bankany, Iowa. And if you give us that word of the day, when we sign you up, we're going to give you an extra 20 points. So that's an incentive for them. Now, what happens in the Facebook demographics is they see that these, these people are going to my Facebook page every Tuesday to get this word of the day. So Facebook recognizes that they want to see what we have to offer. Well, on Wednesdays and Fridays and, and Saturdays, I'm posting wedding, corporate, um, all sorts of other articles that lends to uh, me being a DJ, a wedding DJ, and uh, and and there's it's going on there. It's going right down their Facebook page. It just works out phenomenally. Now, could we mention that you're? I can't tell you how many times. Let's, let's for those who are wondering the points. What did, what do the what do the points have to do with anything? I mean, they get twenty uh, points. What does that mean? All right, so we do six rounds of trivia. Um, and we do 10 questions per round and every, every question is weighted on 10 points or one point, however you said to do it. Um, and then we have a joker that we can use anytime during the game and that doubles the score for that entire round. Well, that just gets my leg up an extra 20 points over somebody who might've forgotten to give the extra, you know, give us the word of the day or phrase of the face. So at the end of the game, if they have to compile the most, those most points, those 20 points could really factor in to two questions basically right. um, that will help them you know, kind of mulligans in a way, uh, kind of free mulligans in a way that you could maybe miss two questions and still end up pretty well. Very cool. So, so you're able to tie in that, that daily or that, that experience, that weekly experience of, of, um, of, of engaging and being able to bring it and carry it over to that event. That's a great idea. And then, I, so then later on the week, I'll I find articles on Huffington Post or Wedding Wire or the Knot and, uh, different things that are trending, and I'll post that on my Facebook page to garner um, some sort of reaction. You know, would you do this at your wedding, or did you see the, like the recently the reveal with the uh, with the with the girl in the dinosaur suit, the blow up dinosaur suit? Yep. Did you see that? Yes, I did. I did. That yeah, was so actually me in the dinosaur that. suit. It wasn't a girl, but that's another story. <laughs> uh, he was he was at Wolby last year. I think uh, that's hilarious. But um, yeah, so we will po we post that video on there and go. Would you would would this be something you would do? Or if we see like a unique cake situation, um, one time there, uh, we posted one as people was like grab a shot, grab a seat, and it was it was their seat assignment, and it was a shot glass full of liquor, and it was just kind of you know would you do this at your reception or what do you think about this magical wedding from Disney that was trending recently? We could rent out Disney for a couple hundred thousand dollars. Um, Disney's expensive, probably several thousand dollars, ten thousand dollars, but not a hundred. But um, you know, wouldn't this be fun? Or, and we try to engage them and, and getting them to respond, reply, and like, and so that it's more interactive. Not only just trivia, but then they kind of see what we do. I can't tell you how many weddings or corporate events I get off my midweek, midweek money. It's just amazing. Um, you know, they're the slow times, and, and they, the kids, they, I say kids, but they're young 20-somethings. They start dating trivia as a safe date. You know, they come out with all their friends, and next thing you know, somebody gets engaged, and well, we want, you know, we want, uh, the host of the, of the trivia place uh, to do it because he's got a great personality. We know him. You know, we've watched him for a couple of years or whatever. So it's, it's, it's a, also builds business phenomenally. So did you ever think um, at some the, in the, in the, did you, Cubby, did you ever think at some point in time in your life, you would be considered a safe date, a safe dating environment? 
<laughs> I, know no, what you, I know what you said. Yeah. Oh, funny. not at all. Funny, funny, funny. Yeah, that's that, that, that's a, a great a great connection because the the ability to reach them, as you say, they know you now. They feel comfortable with you. And then to be able to evolve, because you don't want to be up there while you're, you're doing your trivia and saying, oh, by the way, don't forget me for your weddings. I'm a great wedding DJ. You know, yeah. you're not going to do that. But right. tying, tying them into that social media and the engagement, because for those of you who are, are not active in, in Facebook or, or you haven't done much with it, it's a social element. That means that they post and you have to engage. And you see that even with our, our YouTube things is that we try to engage because it's a social. It's a connection. You guys like it when and you're in a chat room and we, we're talking and, and there with you and, and saying, you know, that, uh, you know, saying hi to Keith and uh, the Wirecast is expensive and, you know, it's horribly expensive. I don't know why. And then Bill Herman's talking about being creepy, which is kind of a common Bill Herman thing. That's yeah. the social side so of it. Uh, precisely, precisely. I think he's got the t-shirts to the tie. I'm, I'm creepy. That's, that was a pickup line he used on Marine and the poor woman fell for it. <laughs> but that's another story for another time. So, so that's, that's now, have you had instances where you've, you've had people who have in, that engage common or are often on your Facebook page that came from some of your shows? Yeah, we, uh, all the time. And that we pick up weddings. Uh, we've also had people uh, propose during trivia. Oh. Um, because that's where they met. That's where their, their relationship kind of grew. They, they started coming in, and, uh, they, and, the, and the girls, it, they never think of it. It was like the farthest thing from their mind um, that he was actually going to propose at a trivia night. We've, I've done that actually three times already. Um, where they've actually proposed at a trivia night, and uh, it's just been a lot of fun. Um, to be a part of that. And then, of course, they use you as a DJ. Um, and they, it's just, like I said, it's, it's, a, it's amazing. To me, it's amazing when they do that. Have you ever have you ever tried to bring some of them in and get a methodology to connect with them, such as you know phone numbers for, for that or email or anything to that effect? Or is it really that once they're connecting on a social media, they will then take the next step to connect with you via a, a, a getting information method? Yeah. Because our trivia is so personable, like we pick up the papers after every round, and they, we don't ask them. Around. I talk to every table. How you, so I build relationships with my trivia teams. I've been at these bars for eight years, um, and so I build the relationships with them. So I know them what they do for a living, um, if they're engaged, you know. Um, so yeah, I find out. And then like I said, then uh, not through social media do I ask for their. You know, I don't want to be Bill Herman and ask for their phone number or email address, but you know that creepy. But I do, I do engage them during trivia, and then they, then they reach out after that. I kind of let them reach out. Never want to be that guy to put a full court press on somebody. Well, you gotta use me, you know. Um, so I get it if they don't use me, but because they have a friend or uncle, Uncle Bill's gonna, Uncle Bill's gonna do our, our ceremony. And that happens an awful lot. I mean, that's in this day and age when somebody I was asking the other day of, of who do I, you know, which which one of my competition do I lose most of my shows to when I'm losing, you know, losing bids and such. And it's very seldom by one. It's not another DJ specifically, another DJ company. It's generally. A, f a friend of the family or, or a friend of, you know, someone from it's, I can't think of any one particular DJ that I've lost probably more than a show to in the last t two or three years. Cause it's so many out there. So, and generally it's an uncle. Yeah. My cousin. dad works with this guy. Yeah. yeah. It's just, it's, it's a different dynamic. Gonna give us a deal. Yeah. As Lori was talking earlier in her segment, she was talking about the idea that, that, you know, we know what the other DJs in the market are doing and we're able to, to in essence sell against that. In, in some ways, but it's what has changed and she didn't uh, get into that because of our time limit is that now we're now having to compete and sell against that uncle who owns some speakers and was a DJ 20 years ago and would, would love to help them or that guy down the road that they really don't know much beyond that. He's the guy down the road and he's a nice guy because we see him walking every day and he seems like a wonderful person. They have no idea of what they're hiring, but it's that connection and yeah, cool. Interesting. And his mom and dad are paying for him. Dad's friend. Yeah, dad's friend from the uh, the local club and uh, and and such and yep. and you know you don't know much about him but you know his name is Bill Herman and you you're wondering if he's a little creepy or not. Yeah, especially when we walked by your house three times, like back and forth, and then back and forth. Yeah, and he's got the binoculars as he's going by. By the way, did I mention this is an eleven-hour show? So we get a little—we're going to get a little punch drunk, I'm afraid, as our day goes on. But that's okay. Yeah. But that's okay. 
Uh, Kelby, we got about five, four or five minutes left. What, what are we gonna? What do you got next for me? I don't know. I do some different things uh, during my receptions that are kind of new twists and old traditions. Um, I think we spoke about it before. And I don't know if any of those people are in there. Uh, one thing I enjoy doing uh, instead of a dollar dance is a selfie dance. Um, so instead of giving one or five ten, uh, I like to do things before the bouquet and the garter, like inviting all the kids on the dance floor and, and doing a candy toss. I have the bride and groom toss candy to them. Um, versus a teddy bear because then only one kid goes home with the teddy bear. The rest kind of get, you know, go home kind of mad. Let's let's uh, look at that one. Sugar them up and set them up. What kind of? Well, how do you how do you recommend okay. another candy toss? Let's look at that one specifically because I remember you asked or you mentioned that before, and I don't think we dug into it. What kind of candy goes over the best for a candy toss? Hershey Kisses because um, they're wrapped and can hit the dance floor. Um, any wrapped kind of candy, I try to save it from hard candy so they don't uh, you know, choke sure. on it or whatever. Um, I tend to get Hershey Kisses uh, and uh, play "I Want Candy" by Aaron Carter. Um, as you know, as we're getting ready to do it, um, of course, the bouquet and the garter is all the bride and groom's decision. But I figured this is something we're kind of doing, and "I Want Candy" is a fantastic song uh, to use for, for that. We invite all the kids on the dance floor, and we count one, two, three, and they toss candy in the air. So, did you and have both the bride? Right before the bouquet, do you have both the bride and the groom toss candy, and are they throwing it over their shoulder? Kind of walk yeah. me through how you set that up. Yeah, kind of over their shoulder. I get one bowl, one bowl. I get one bag per event, and uh, I got a bowl, a nice silver bowl that I got off of Amazon for four bucks. It looks real fancy, and I uh, carry it in my backpack every time with a bag of Hershey Kisses. And then have the you know we invite all the kids on the dance floor. And then the brides turn, you know, bride and groom turn, so they're facing, not facing, and they kind of toss it, kind of throw below sometimes, so it doesn't bonk them in the head uh, more towards the dance floor, but still throw behind them, and then some will lightly toss over the top. I'm just reading with Bill Herman. He's he's distracted, but he did mention that bouncing candy off their head is a fun thing. So, <laughs> so so yeah. How how do you when you have older? You know, there's there's some little hooks or little things we say. You know, when there when a guest there's someone who's an older one who's in a kid activity. I mean, I'm sure you have that. How do you have a little fun yeah. with those adults when they're coming out there to catch some of the candy from the kids' candy toss? I tell them that I. Uh... I just asked them to go to the side over here because they're going to toss a bunch of this side. So I kind of get them to the side of the dance floor. I'm going, okay, go over here because this is where they're going to throw the most at. And they have all the kids on the other side. And then they'll chuck them one or two on the other side. And if it's a groomsman or something, the, bride, the groom will usually chuck it pretty hard at them. So <laughs> I'm going to see that happen. Oh, yeah. It will happen. Unfortunately, there's some 12-year-old kid who was like turned at the wrong time and catches it right up alongside of the head. You say that, but sometimes I'll do a football toss. I'll wrap the guard around a football. Mm-hmm. And I had a long snapper for the University of Nebraska one time, so he hiked it. And as he hiked the ball, the kid was running across the dance floor. And it could have been any more perfect in the movies. It could have been any more. And it hit the kid. The ball of football hit the kid right in the head. He goes, boom. So no more do I let them hike the ball. I let them toss it. <laughs> this kid was running perfectly. And you talk about bigging him in the side of the head. It was. It could have been, I mean, it could have been choreographed any better. And, and depending upon how – yeah, it's depending upon how long snapper. I mean, if you if you've been in if you played football, you know that most long snappers basically they are throwing the football instead of throwing it overhand like the quarterback does. They're basically chucking it just like the quarterback does, except in a hiking or or what have you between our legs. So when I was when I was teaching my center to be a long snapper, these guys have got some the gusto on that ball. So if it hit that child <laughs> as a college long snapper would do. <laughs> Could have knocked him. I thought it was a great idea. I'm like, oh, you know, you played for the university, started all four years, Nebraska. This would be great, you know. We'll play the tunnel walk. And he hiked that thing, and that kid, oh, man. So oh, my it was – he got up. He got up, but it was a good one. Oh, crazy, crazy. So I'm like – you learn every time. Yeah, there you do. That's that's part of the part of our, our experience. So, gang, we're going to uh, let Cubby get going here. We'll be back in just a few minutes because we've got our next segment coming on. We've got Jake Palmer coming up just after 5. Go to the mini sessions, djntv.com slash mini sessions. Find our next show. And, again, we'll have Jake Palmer back in a little bit. Cubby, thanks for being on. Thanks, John. 